Sweet Pea and Chickadee YouTube channel. I'm Brooke. I'm Kim. And today is actually January 31st, um, and it is Sunday, and we are coming to you from Haymarket, Virginia. We just recorded episode five yesterday, so we're coming to you with a special episode six because it's Raging Pearl mm -hmm. and Designs Giveaway. Woo! <laughs> uh, this is especially, especially um, awesome for us because... I know Rebecca. I love Rebecca, Rebecca. McKenzie from Raging Pearl Winds. She's such a dear friend and she's adorable and her patterns are mm -hmm. amazing. I'm always first in line to test them ever since we became friends and we actually became friends through a test knit. So we'll mm -hmm. talk about that later. Um, but first, let's talk about what we're wearing because everything we're going to be showing you on this episode. It's not going to be a normal episode where basically it's a giveaway episode for one of her designs. We're going to go through and highlight all of the patterns that I have made of hers so you can see real life versions of them mm -hmm. and kind of showcase a couple more that I want to knit later. Um, so it's not going to follow our normal like, yeah. procedure of episodes, but it's going to be fun, full of yarn and full of knits. So let's get started. First, I want to talk about back to what I'm wearing because it is so warm in here and I'm not going to want to take it off pretty quick. Um, I think this is my latest test knit of hers. I it was so. back in the fall. This is the Francie shawl. And I know, I, I think I highlighted this on episode one. I think, I, I love this one. But it was on Marisol last time. This time I'm wearing it. It is beautiful. Uh, Rebecca has this design for three sizes. I test knit the large size. I always do. I like large shawls. Mm -hmm. Um, there's also a medium one, which I believe she knit herself. So in all of her pictures is the medium, so quite large. And there's also a small version as well. Um, a lot of good things about her designs for shawls and Caldan is she has multiple sizes for them, which are great. I decided, I usually do pops of color, which you'll see Wait, later everywhere. everywhere in all of my patterns, but I was just kind of yearning for a really good staple color, like mm -hmm. something I can throw on with everything because while I had love the pops of color, sometimes it's kind of hard to match it to what I'm wearing. Um, so I thought, you know, a really good solid color of something that I don't already have. Um, so I went to the store and got this dark blue, I think it's called Ocean. Yes, yeah, so this is um, Brocco Ultra Wool in the Fine the fingering uh, base and it is ocean and it's beautiful I love it it was kind of dark and it wasn't as much fun it all the color pops because it was all like a dark color but I mean it was so pretty and I, I wear it a lot you do like, I feel like I, I reach it. for it I reach for it all the time besides it being nice big and cozy I mean this is like it wraps around this and thing is huge also for her to whack me with it or in the, the store, store I, I you know kind of hit her sometimes when she gets out of line I got, it's not even when I got a lot. It's like when I'm walking. <laughs> but I'll include pictures here so you can see our, our final, you know, test knit pictures, which Brooke was the model, I believe. And it was, I, was I? Yeah, it was fall. Oh, so it was still yeah, warm okay. outside. It was nice and back in the good old days. I also took a picture of it on the on our fence so they could, they could see how big it is. We did. We put it up on our horse pasture fence line so you can see it. Horse, uh, Smoke, our horse, was a little, like, weirded out by mm -hmm. it. He was all prancing around being like, what are you doing to my fence? Seriously. But <laughs> everything's fine. So these pictures will be nice and green and, well, just paradise-like. But um, right now we're in the middle of a snowstorm. It's awesome. We're so excited. We haven't had real snow in like a couple years. Yeah, on, we haven't had like a snowstorm. I think the, like, the last snowstorm we had was Snowzilla. Yeah, and it's not really a huge snowstorm, but I mean, it's still snowing. It's pretty awesome. I know. We have a we have a, a, a snowstorm warning going on. I know. It's pretty exciting. Like it's supposed to snow all day, all night, and then all day tomorrow. Yeah. For us uh, Southern gals here in Virginia, we're very excited <laughs> for some snow because we're from the North originally. So we're excited for any time there's snow. <laughs> but now that we've gone over this, I'm going to take this off and then we can talk about what Brooke is wearing so I can in take case she off. takes hers off. <laughs> so this is Raging Pearl Winds um, Aperture called Anna. It is awesome. It's made with one skein and actually this is how much I had left over of that skein. So quite a bit. You can use scraps if you want. This is great for solid and speckled and kind of stripey variegated. It's great because if you can see, which we'll take off in a second, mm -hmm. um, you'll see these two triangle patterns in the design, which you can kind of see now, but we'll make it a little closer. I like them. it because it's just like, it's so simple to like put on too. And it looks nice in the front. 
I like it. I like it when there's a jacket over it too. Yeah. So it like looks like you have like this little like hang um like kerchief kind of sitting down. I love it. It's so cute. I love the colors. Um, go ahead and take it off, Rick. <laughs> I like to know what you want me to take it off. <laughs> so this yarn that I use for it is Dragonfly Fibers Genie Sock in Eastern Bluebird. I love this color. I'm saving it. Like I'm not even gonna put it in my scrappy anything yet yeah. because I think I want to try and make some like shorty socks out of it. You I should weigh it. I think I have enough. Gloves. So you always gloves. say gloves. I always I say always socks. Say gloves and she wants gloves. Because they, I don't want gloves. You I, don't wear gloves. I don't wear gloves. <laughs> but like I just think it looks so cute in gloves. But anyways, hold it up so they can see that um great design right there. I mean, look how well you can see in that variegated yarn even. And you know in like a solid color, you can definitely see it. And then this is the back. Yep, so it's a Caldana. It's connected in the back, triangle in the front. I believe this one only came in one size. This is her first one that she designed, and I loved it. Testing it that as well. Um, and this little design right here is super simple, guys. So for beginners, I would say can definitely do this. Rebecca's, all I believe all of Rebecca's designs, she just writes them so well that even beginners can do her lace work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Always. I mean, I think that's really great. And she has great tutorials on her YouTube page as well. But yes, I just love the colors of this. And it's we'll so link great. her YouTube channel in the description. Of course. And um, another fun fact, we're trying to see how many videos Brooke can wear the same sweatshirt in. Okay. <laughs> it is a very comfy sweatshirt. It is one of my favorites. Um, obviously. <laughs> she came in today, I was like, that's what you're wearing? She's like, yeah. I'm like, you literally have worn that, I think, for like at least like, half of our I episodes. I think there was two other ones. I think this was the third one I wore it. <laughs> It does get washed in between, folks. It does. It does. <laughs> so we know. But we usually podcast on the weekends, and it's like her weekend sweatshirt. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Okay. What else am I wearing, guys? <laughs> I am wearing the Step in, Stepping Stones Cardi by Raging Pro Lens, which is Rebecca McKenzie. I love it. I think it's my first cardigan I ever knit. I plan to knit a ton more, obviously. Yeah. Um, but I love this panel work right here. And also, I love how she carries it over to the sleeves. It's also around the bottom of the sweater, which you can't see. I'm gonna include pictures here that I had submitted because it's also a test knit. Um, it's beautiful, it's comfortable, and I love how you can always easily modify her design. So I like to, for sleeves, she actually has two options for sleeves in there. I did the regular options included, um, but what I did was I like to have my sleeves a little longer. I just like having them long. I'm tall, I have long arms, I just having long sleeves. Um, and so I just extended it. I just went seven more rows before I did the lace panel. That's it. It was like super easy to do and it turned out perfect. The yarn I used was a Vitalana by, it's actually a Knit Crate yarn. And Brooke, why don't you tell us the base of that and the color? All right, so the colorway is mistletoe and the base is 40% merino wool, 20% baby alpaca, 32% organic cotton, and that's it. <laughs> and it's Vitalana Lofty DK. So you can show her the, so our kittens got a hold of my yarn, which is why I've gone through and bought a whole new storage system for all my yarn. They like the good stuff. So this is my first time working with a chainette type yarn. Um, and it turned out awesome. I mean, it doesn't even look like, it looks like a regular yarn. It's super soft. It doesn't look that chain, like it doesn't look look that fluffy at all mm -hmm, but it's really soft but on this it's just really soft and cozy i love it you guys should definitely check out chainette type styles okay next up um the pitter patter caldana marisol is modeling for us right now <laughs> um i love this this was her second cowl that she caldana that she designed i test this one as well i mean <laughs> i test now that we're friends i test i mean ever since the first one i tested i test them all pretty much mm -hmm. um so this is the pitter patter caldana it is a dk base i believe it calls for i did the large size i can't remember if there's two or three sizes versions but i did the larger one i always do mm -hmm. um and i just love this as well the yarn we used is the odding wools halo dk and the color is malachite i love the pops of like emeraldy green with like the yeah. aqua it does brooke thinks it's very mermaidy it does mm -hmm. give that mermaid vibe and it's very that the stitch pattern that rebecca uses makes it very squishy so brooke do you want to show up close what the stitch pattern looks like it's very nice 
very, you know, easy to memorize. And I love that. I wear that a lot because I like that it goes a little longer. So it's like a little more cozy. Where the, this one I like for like warmer, like more spring days where it's not quite so cold, but you want something around your neck, like mm -hmm. it's a little breezy or something, but not really to keep you too warm. That one will definitely keep you more warm. And it, probably one of Rebecca's, I would say most popular patterns that I've noticed that people make all the time is the mermaid top. Um, this is beautiful. It's got a really nice stitch pattern up here. I'll include pictures so you get a closer look. Um, I love the yarn. This is a cotton yarn, which is right here. Brooke, you want to show? It is Universal Cotton Supreme DK Sea Spray, and it's in the lilac colorway. It's definitely really pretty and definitely your colors. Definitely. And it's cotton which is why I block it a little differently. I only steam block these that are cotton because I don't want it to get too stretched out. But if you, if it, which is really great for cotton, if you make it a little small, you can, you know, make it stretch out even more if you really want to. But I love the design up here, easily like memorizable, super simple. The sleeves are small and like capped right here. And it has a nice flow and it, you know, makes room for hips up down here. I love this. It is so pretty, the neckline and everything. And she also has a cropped version as well. So there's like a cropped version of the mermaid top. That's cool. Yeah. That was a cute leggings. Mm-hmm. So cute. It is really cute. <sighs> the story of how I met Rebecca from Raging Pearl Winds. Um, somebody had tagged me or I put on their stories how someone was looking, Rebecca, was looking <laughs> for a test knit for some larger sizes. Um, for a tank top pattern and I either was tagged or it was on someone else's stories they shared and I saw it and I was like, oh, that looks like a cute tank top. I'll go ahead and test knit that. Um, and then, so I did and it was for the Radiance tank. That was the very mm -hmm. first one I test knit for her. And what she does is she puts us into groups, which is really great. She's a great test knitter. Coordinator. Um, coordinator. Good. <laughs> Thanks, oh, yeah. She's a good test knit coordinator because what she does is she puts us into groups on Instagram, like into group chats, and that way she can kind of keep track of us and they, we can ask questions and other people can kind of jump in and answer or she can. Um, and then there's always like the beginner intro where we're like, tell mm -hmm. us where you're from and you know, what, how many years you've been knitting or something interesting or something. Um, and that's where we found out that we actually live like 10, 15 minutes <laughs> away from each other. Isn't that crazy how Instagram yeah. works? Like all over the world, I could be testing me for somebody and it's for someone that lives like in the same city <laughs> I do. It was crazy. So we met up for coffee and our friendship just bloomed from there. Right, Rebecca? <laughs> I do love Rebecca. She's, <laughs> She's so nice. Awesome. Okay, so uh, the Radiance Tank, the first one I ever made or test knit for her, which I love this. Okay, so it's a tank top, but look at the bottom. So pretty. Isn't it pretty? And my favorite detail is on the back. Look at that. It's so cute. So I always want to wear my hair up when I wear this because you can just see that detail on the back. Didn't you wear this to um, Maryland Sheep and Wool? No, I wore... I probably did. I think you wore this because we were like both wearing tank tops. Yeah, Maryland probably. Sheep Maryland Sheep and Wool. And I wear it to like yarn stores and everyone's like, oh, where'd you... I'm like, oh, it's a radiance, babe. <laughs> and I just love it. And what I made, I made this out of um, some really, because, so, while it does get cold in the wintertime here in Virginia, it's, it's confusing. also really hot and humid in the summer. So if I'm going to make a tank top, it cannot be wool. So what I always do is like a cotton blend or something like that to make it not so hot. Um, so for this one, I actually use Bamboo Pop. And that is in... The color Raisin, Universal Yarn, Bamboo Pop, and Raisin. Soft. I know, it's so soft. <gasps> now, it's a little bit different because it is a little, uh, it's got a little bit of a sheen to it. Not too bad. I was actually thought it would be a lot more shiny. It's not. Um, but it's a little thinner feeling than most. Like, I think it, it says it's a DK, but... It looks like fingernail. Yeah, but it's really, it's really thin. So what I had to do is I had to go up a needle size to, I had to definitely gauge since I was testing, of course, I had to definitely gauge, do a swatch. And I went up a needle to size five. I think it calls for size four. I had to go up to size five. But other than that, it turned out beautifully and I really like it. And it's very affordable. These bamboo pops are too. So I just really love this. It was my first one. I'll include all the pictures here I did for the test knit. 
and I just love it for summertime. Also, like, majority of the pictures that you guys see with mom modeling, I'm the one taking pictures. <laughs> oh so you can thank me for taking time out of my day. I'm just kidding. She's just, just kidding. kidding. She loves doing Well, she helps me. That's why, like, the one time, well, so when we did the Francie shawl pictures, I was like, you, she's like, wait, I have I know, I was picture? like, I'm, I'm and not. I was like, I know what I want the pictures to be. And instead of trying to explain it, we, and we were, only had a few minutes yeah, and so I'm like, let's somewhere. just do it. You're going to have to go out here and do it. And I know exactly the, the types of pictures and the angles I want. Because you know people who are trying to take pictures or have pictures taken of them, and you know what angles and what you mm -hmm. want to show and trying to explain that to people sometimes, your teenage daughter, <laughs> it's like, it's just like, I'd rather just, I can do it. I didn't, honestly, I actually, like, I felt like, like a famous person, like, just getting photographs <laughs> taken of. I'm like, okay, Brooke, look away from the camera. Look down. Look up. <laughs> <laughs> it was really fun. It was fun for me. I liked it. But, yes, Brooke is my photographer for all of my testnet pictures, if anybody is wondering. I love and doing it. And, by the way, we take a bazillion of pictures, and I pick, like, two or three. Yeah, can we just talk about how I take two, and I'm like, all right, mom, what about these? She's like, mm. <laughs> No, keep going. I'm like, wait, my... My chin looks weird, or yeah. my you're showing too much of my nose, or it's because if I only want it from like here down, or at, I like I'm doing very it. specific I, of what I want it to look like, which is understandable because like you know if you made it, you want to like show off everything that you made. Well, and it's not like I'm just posting it on my page. Like I'm as a test knitter, I mm -hmm. feel like I have responsibility to try and give. But really, you're representing them. Too. Yeah, I'm giving. I have to give really great pictures of my product in order for the designer to be able to use those. Yeah, because that's why I'm testing, right? I just feel like that. I mean. You know, it'll have to. Sometimes they're not as great. Like, I think my aperture, no, my Pitter Patter Caldana picture, which I have already showed, I'll show again, wasn't my favorite because it was like I was working late and we got home, it was dark, and I needed to post something. So mm -hmm. it's a little darker than I would like, but you know, you, you go with what you got. With what you got. Now, my favorites. <laughs> okay. It's hard to pick my favorite because my most wearable, I would say, is my Francie. Mm -hmm. Um,. Or the Pitter Patter Caldana, I also wear that one a lot. I, I notice it's probably like the solid -y colors that are like easy to wear. But if we're talking about the most fun I ever had knitting, which seems really odd, I don't know what it was. I, I tell Rebecca this all the time that this pattern, this one, her vintage tea shop shawl, was the most fun to knit. And I don't know why. I, I think it was a combination of the bright colors, obviously, mm -hmm. um, and the fact it was DK weight, so it makes it feel like you're knitting more faster and the stitch pattern was just very fun I don't know it it does I don't I don't know what it was exactly but I finished it in like two days or three days the same I, really <laughs> I, 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 I didn't notice these before the little like balls at the end yep those are called pico so we'll talk pico. about those which the Francie shawl also has so this is the vintage tea shop tea shop shawl by uh, Raging Pearlwin which is Rebecca McKenzie this is the version I did. I used the same yarn dyer that she used in hers. Hers is like this creamy white with the, you know, where my toffee color is, is her creamy white. And then it's like this um, creamy white with purple. That's pretty. It's so, it's so pretty. It's very vintage tea shop. Like exactly very what Rebecca. you think. Very yes, Rebecca. She's, yeah. So I love this. This is from Threadhead Knits. Um, wait. This is from Threadhead Knits Co. Um, I made um, in the strong DK base. Um, this color is the toffee, and this color is royalty. And I just royalty. love it. I know, royalty. Royalty. So you'll notice, if you go look at Rebecca's site, that her vintage tea shop shawl is a lot smaller. And it's only one size written right now. Um, what I did is, you know how I like larger shawls, is I was like, you know what, I'm going to make mine bigger, and I'm not going to do anything fancy or anything complicated, I'm just going to double it. <laughs> so I bought double the yarn, and I simply doubled the pattern repeats before I came to the bottom. So I just basically, before this contrast row, I doubled this middle. That's it. That's all I did. Mm -hmm. It was so easy to do. Her patterns are so easy to do that, and I just needed double the yarn. It was simple as that. And it was amazing. And she's got this great pico, which means if you double the size, you the double you're also pico. double the pico binds off. So she, they just look so great. And I always pin mine when I'm blocking. This hasn't been blocked recently. Yeah, I the picos. Here are the picos, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Brooke's learning a new, 
New slang here. I think it's like my new word now. I'm just gonna say picos randomly. Like when they're talking about like circular things, I'll be like, oh, it's a pico. <laughs> yeah, it's a pico. And you can show. So for the, oh, I see the picos yeah, now. For the Francie shawl. That's my new favorite word. I love saying that word now. For the Francie shawl at this side. Yep, yeah, you're right. That the pico is there as well. And this shawl was huge, which means there were tons of pico on that bind off, which took a while and a lot of pinning when you're blocking. You don't have to pin them when you block. You can have them, but I'm very kind of cautious. Just, you know, I want them to be perfectly pico cautious. <laughs> and so I just pinned them all. That's just, I, and it didn't take that long. I mean, it did, but not, <laughs> not like a long time. And I think I had either Damon, my husband, or you come in and like help me take off the pins when I it was dry was me I was come in, I come in and take off the pins for you <laughs> I think well with me I think that's what it was well yeah but um this is my I would say and I love the colors it makes me I reach for this all the time the only thing is it doesn't match a whole lot but what I use it for a lot is when I'm commuting well okay back in the day <laughs> last winter when I'm commuting into the city for work um, underneath my nice dress, you know, jacket that I'm mm -hmm. like wool jacket that I'm all bundled up in with my hat. I have this underneath, and so it's just peeking out. So it's a bright pop of color That's underneath cool. my very yeah, professional like jacket. It keeps me super warm, and it gives me like a little bit of me. Yeah. So like I'm not so you normally don't look like everyone else. I'm not normally all like super professional looking, and that's not like my everyday yeah. look at all. <laughs> so I always have to have a little pop of. Hey, it's me in here. Runs in <laughs> that I'll take off when it I get to work. It runs in the family. <laughs> that I'll take off when I get to work anyways. But I just love this so much. It's my favorite. This is the vintage tea shop shawl. Okay, next what I want to do is talk. Those are the ones I've knit so far. There's one other one I've tested it for her, but she hasn't released it yet. So we're not going to show that here. Um, but the there's a couple I want to knit next. And that she released those before I was testing, obviously. Which she also did the vintage tea shop shawl. And the, and the mermaid top were, she like designed those and released those before um, I knew her, so I wasn't testing mm -hmm. those yet. But the next one, like on the very, very tippy top of my list to knit for her that I've, I already own the pattern even, is the Love Note Tank. Brooke, do you want to hold it up? It is so pretty. I'm oh my in gosh, love you guys. With this. I'm sure you guys have all seen this. If not, go out and get the yarn now. Definitely in love. It is so pretty. I'm thinking. Just to wear by itself or even underneath a cardigan mm -hmm. or i mean there's so many possibilities you can wear this in the summer because we're hot here or if you're a little cooler place you wear a jacket or like in the mm -hmm. fall or spring but it's like be a great under tank i mean it is so cute i just love this i work once one too i do want one so cute <laughs> second on my list is the little vine hat i also already own this pattern as well I think that is just so cute. Very nice, simple structure. It's very fluffy. So do yeah. the yarn she used. I really like it. And that palm is actually really cool. Mm -hmm. I don't know where she, I have to ask her where she got that palm. Rebecca, let me know. Where'd she get that palm? That was really cute. So another great thing about Rebecca's patterns is that she has quite a few that are free. So you guys should, should definitely go and check them out. I definitely have this next one on my list and it's actually already a free one, but I've downloaded it. It is the Wine Bottle Sock Cozy and it is free. Isn't that so cute for like when you're bringing a hostess gift or Love you just want to have it, you know, in your own house for decoration. I think if you like give someone a gift, you can give them like two gifts, like just the wine and the cozy. And a little cozy. And it protects the bottle mm -hmm. too. I mean, it's so cute. and Like, I love it. I love that color too that she used. Okay. And this last one, which is also free, is her snowy wonderland hat. And there's Rebecca modeling it. Isn't she so pretty? I know she's so pretty. And there's her cute hat. I love that. It looks like little snowballs. I, know, I love right? it. I definitely want to make that, especially now that it's like super snowy outside. Yeah. I definitely want to make that hat. And it's free, guys. Go download it now. <laughs> okay, she also has a bunch of other shawls and a bunch of other patterns. Definitely go check them out. Um, but she has graciously wanted to give away a pattern on our podcast for free. And it's not even like one pattern that she's going to tell you which one to choose from. You get to choose any of her patterns. So no matter the price point, pick one pattern and you get it for free to the winner of our drawing. So for our drawing, we're going to have you like last time comment below to this video. And the prompt is Brooke, do you want to read off the prompt? All right. The prompt is 
Which <laughs> raging pearl and pattern would you like to knit? That's right. So you can pick any of the ones we've listed here. You can pick any of the ones you find on her Ravelry page. Um, she also has an Etsy page. I'll go ahead and link that below too, is if you can't do Ravelry right now. Um, but if you've already knit one, pick a new one, like something you haven't knit yet. Mm -hmm. What would be the one you'd want to knit next? It doesn't have to be the one you pick if you win. Just what would you want to knit next? And then also some other requirements to enter this giveaway. You have to be subscribed and yeah. Follow us at Sweet Pea and Chickadee on Instagram. Um, you can also follow me on Ravelry at K Armini, first initial, last name. But go ahead and give us a subscribe in order to win on our YouTube channel. All right, and the deadline for this giveaway is actually going to be on Valentine's Day, February 14th, and we're going to begin drawing names on February 15th. That's right, midnight, wherever you are, February 14th, and we will draw names on February 15th, which in here in the U.S. is President's Day. Um, but we'll go ahead and draw names and we'll post it on YouTube on this uh, video. And then we'll also try and reach out to you via YouTube as well. If I see that you're following us on Instagram and I haven't heard from you, I'll also try and ping you there as well. Um, obviously if we don't hear from you for like a week or two, I would say by like, maybe like one or two podcasts have gone, we'll draw another name mm -hmm. because I mean, okay. I haven't had a problem with that so far, but yeah. I know other podcasters have a problem with getting sometimes getting people to respond mm -hmm. like they just forget that they entered um but yeah so we'll have a pattern free giveaway of your choice from rebecca at raging pearl wins and it's gonna be really exciting i'm really excited to be able to showcase rebecca she's a um, yep. great designer um great friend and just a wonderful person and she just i think it shows in her designs this is definitely a fun episode in my opinion just with all like the cool patterns this episode came a little faster than normal. Just a couple days ago, we released episode five. This is now episode six, but it's a specialty one because we're doing a giveaway. Um, our next episode uh, seven will be back to normal routines, um, probably in another week, week and a half. Um, that's the plan. I don't want to get too, too <laughs> much on planning because like, we never really know when we have the time. I mean, we should have a lot of time because we are in quarantine. Yeah. But stuff happens, guys. I mean, we all know how that is, right? Yeah. Other than that, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.